log of the Electra, Matt Mercury commanding. We are two days out of Earth's space on a shakedown cruise of the fleet's newest Phantom class cruiser. She's one of a kind, and I hope to treat her as such. But the Rocket Rangers have been diverted to Helios Prime. Leaving our normal patrol route to investigate a faint distress signal. A signal sent from a world that until now has been forbidden to all humans. Someone call me? Ah, uh, Jinky, the uh, stabilizers are acting up again. What do I got, astromech written on my dome? Call me when you realize we need a new captain. Captain Mercury, the signal's gone. I can't see anything. It's as if the planet's dead. Well, what could kill an entire planet of molten men? A swarm of pectilian lava moths? No. Malarkian time vampires. Flagellian stink bees? <laughs> We prepared the pod for planetary operation in hopes of discovering the answers to this most perplexing problem. How are you, Sparks? I'm sweaty. I don't see any signs of life. These dark rocks. I think they're dead lava men. I think our answers lie in that temple. Are you Earthers? Yes, and we're here to help. Who are you and who did this to your people? I am Lord Volcro. Velcro? Volcro, you know, like the god Vulcan. You mean like the planet Vulcan? <sighs> Never mind. Professor Brainwave double crossed me after I delivered the Galaxo Crunch I dumped. That sounds gross. He. he. he had squirt guns. Who is Professor Brainwave? A madman. Mutated by the creatures of the Alpha Zone. He is now controlled by the Galactic Mastermind. Okay, and what's a Galaxo crunch -a dump Stop saying that. A machine I built to steal worlds. Whose world? Yours. Out on the edge of right and wrong. Beyond the stars, where love is lost If you need someone to set you free Just say his name, Mad Mercury Mad Mercury, Mad Mercury His life belongs to those in need just be and say his name, Matt McGee. Don't be afraid, my little one, cause there is life beyond the sun. Please keep the faith and trust your dreams, and say his name. Mercury, Mercury, 
With the mysterious Lord Velcro, I mean Volcro, recovering in our sick bay, the Electra has been ordered to rendezvous with the battleship Valkyrie at Deep Mobile Station CX-17, more commonly known as the Chuck Wagon. and the home of unfinished business, Mokris Dunner. <sighs> Don't start another fight, Matt Mercury, or I will throw you out like I did last time. Rocket Ranger or not? What is my fascination with girls who threaten me? General Axelrod, you will hurt. You won't feel stupid by this. Gosh, I hate Mulchris. And I don't see how the captain can stand to talk to a Dunner anyway. What about me? You're different, Nemo. How? Well, you're an animal with human DNA, and she's a human with animal DNA. So, uh, Mokris, what happened to us? You... Are you gonna order anything, Rocket Boy? No, I, I mean it. I thought we had a good thing going. You even had a shot of command. Now you ten bar. Seems like a loss. You look so good in that uniform. Well, uniforms aren't for me. I have a duty to a higher fashion. What about your duty to me, Mulchris? Duty, honor, the occasional good time. It's good for you. It's good for you. I want it more than that. What about shopping the antique stores, holding your purse while you try on ermine cat suits at the outlet mall? I finally realized that Ermine is a short-tailed weasel, just like you, Matt. Well, I think you just couldn't commit to making the right choices. You know, I'm not thirsty after all. Do you believe we should follow our own destiny, Matt? I believe we should follow the rules. You forgot to kiss your freaky girlfriend goodbye. Not my girlfriend. Now, let's see what's up Jet's thruster pipe. <sighs> Delicious, foamy, warm horse nugget. It's what spacemen bring up. What's with the bolts, Jet? Hardly standard issue. I'm special ops now, old friend. Highly classified stuff. And, uh, who's the little fellow over here? I'm Mike Metro. I won the Junior Rocket Ranger contest. He'll be following me around today. Well, Mike, my name is Matt Mercury, and these are my Rocket Rangers. It's an honor to meet you, sir. Well, maybe Uncle Lightning can tell us what he's been up to while the Earth is being attacked. Who told you about that? Some hothead I picked up on Helios. <sighs> There's more to tell. Follow me to my battleship's briefing chamber. This is the Alpha Zone, an area of space more than 400,000 light years across the center of our galaxy. And until now, it has been completely unknown to us an advanced malevolent civilization that threatens all we know. This is the Galactic Mastermind. That is creeping me out. How do you even know this is real? It looks fake to me. 
Many things appear to be beyond belief to the untrained eye, Captain Mercury. And just who in Neptune's eye are you? My name is Dr. Ernst Seifer, but you may call me Dr. Seifer. And how do you know so much, Doc? Beyond the fact that I've gone to school? This all sounds impossible. As a fellow scientist, I would think that you, of all people, Dr. Nemo, would realize that anything is possible with science as your ally, yeah? So, who's Professor Brainwave? Observe. His head looks like a big butt. Ah, so you know of my nemesis. He was once a friend, until the mastermind mutated his brain and he turned to devising nefarious plots. You mean like stealing the Earth with a huge ship made on Helios Prime by a race of molten men? You mean that kind of nefarious? To continue, the Alpha Zone is populated by non-corporeal beings, essentially living minds. These creatures have at their core a desire to rule this galaxy, but they are lazy. They don't like to travel. I propose to you that this central core of planet, this ring of worlds, is a contrivance on a gargantuan scale. Contrivance meaning non-naturally occurring thing. Hey, Jinky, could you get me some hot tea? Sure, why not? Not like anyone ever asks me if I need a shot at WD-40 or anything. What I'm trying to say is, these creatures from the Alpha Zone mean to gather up all the civilized worlds like trinkets on some monstrous charm bracelet. Do not be so shocked by the evil of the void, Captain Mercury. It's not that. My robot put milk in my tea. I hate milk in my tea. Sorry. How could I forget such a thing? Center control to ESS Argo. Center control to ESS Argo. You are go for defensive operations. Repeat, you are go for defensive operations. So Intruder craft, this is Captain Drexus McCloud of the Earth, Starship Argo. You are entering restricted space. If you do not change your course, I will be forced to fire upon you. Thank you very much. Ooh, we'd better do just what Captain McCloud says, don't you think? Doesn't he know I could just squash him like a bug? Really? I mean, no offense to you and your purple-faced bug friends, of course. I'm not joking! Captain may not have properly estimated our vehicle size, speed, or fully understood the inertial forces at play. Ooh, so sorry, Captain McCloud. Now, set a course for Earth. Full speed ahead. We have engaged the Phantom Drive much earlier than planned. Now the Electra is traveling faster than any ship made by man. At these space light speeds, and a little luck, we'll reach Earth before the intruder completes its mission. I only wish all my problems were as easy to resolve. Pining after a girl is a poor use of a hero's time, Matt. Royce? The name's Master Sergeant Royce Rogers, and don't you forget it, mister. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just rattling your cage there, Matt. No biggie. <laughs> well, you know, the bombs are doing a pretty good job of that, Royce. Fear not, Matt Mercury. Heroes are made on days such as these. One day you'll look back on this with pride. You'll say to yourself, the best days of my life were spent in the trenches of John Ray with Royce Rogers. 
Together we fought for truth and justice in the great Cash Tong Miners Revolt. I don't think so. Galaxy Pop? No, but thanks anyway. So, what were you saying about pining away for a girl? Royce Rogers rules. Excuse me? They're copyrighted, so by law you can't use them. Okay. Whatever. Royce Rogers has two rules about relationships. Rule number one is that you cannot force a bad relationship. You can only support a good one. And rule two? Rule number two is that a man who always does right should have faith that all will work out in the long run. I had a flashback just for that? Maybe. I don't know. It's your flashback, Matt. Incoming call on line two. Who is it? Your friend, Max Neptune from the Atomic Space Patrol. Patch him through. Mercury, in case you haven't noticed, we have an invasion on our hands down here. Max, turn down the theme music. Oh. Oh. Better? Yeah. Take a look at this. M Reggie, patch him through. The intruder. Right. Well, you and your ranger flyboys are out there hopping galaxies. We've been evacuating high command. The controllers insist on staying in Central City, and we're doing the best we can. But due to Section 33326 of the Universal Control Charter, I can't force these guys to do anything they don't want. Besides, Mercury, I've got problems of my own. Marshal and the kid is attacking Whittier. I'm getting my rockets out of here. Max, you've done all you can do. Now get your rockets out of there. Ah, good idea, Mercury. Oh, one last thing. Knight takes Rook. Checkmate! Blast! Trigori Gambit. You never see it coming. Max, out. Come in. Captain! I have a bone to pick with you. What is it, Jinky? This phantom drive doesn't seem to have any moving parts. Just how am I supposed to work on it? What was wrong with our old rocket? Dr. Cypher says we need it against the intruder. Is Dr. Cypher the new ship's engineer? I don't have time for this, Jinky. Of course you don't, Captain. That's just the point. As long as I keep my vocoder shut and keep the ship running, you don't even want to see me. Now that's just not true. Isn't it? Do I ever get chosen for bridge duty? You're just so good with machines. Oh, I see. So I'm a machine, and I'm the only one who can work with machines. I'm getting a lawyer. Now hold it just a dadgum minute, Jinky. Maybe my lawyer can tell me why I'm passed up every year for a promotion. Jinky, have you ever wondered why I have a gorilla for a science officer? Sometimes. Have you ever wondered why this is the only ship in the fleet with a robotic engineer? Well... Wait, let me tell you. It's because I prefer the company of animals, aliens, and machines to that of humans. I had no idea. An 800 pound gorilla can't do half the damage a 108 pound woman can. Trust me. I guess I tend to miss certain things. Not having a heart and all. Oh, if I only had a heart. Ah, just the ape I wanted to see. We are entering the Terran system. All right, let's see what we're up against. Dr. Cypher, please come to the bridge. There's something I'd like you to see. Captain Mercury, if I'm to complete a weapon sufficient enough to destroy the intruder, I must not be disturbed. Doctor, the Earth is entrapped by large metallic tentacles. Call me if it gets worse. A 
I'm getting a planet-wide transmission. From Control Council? No, from the intruder. Put it on main scope. Peoples of Earth, as you may now surmise, all hope is lost. I am your captor, Professor Brainway, but you may simply call me Master. Please fasten your seatbelts and refrain from moving about the planet. This may be a very bumpy ride. Dr. Cypher, I think it just got worse. I did everything I could to get Jet to tell me what's up. But I know enough to know that Matt is in over his head this time. I just hope he doesn't do anything stupid. How you doing, Velcro? I'm, I mean, Lord Velcro. I am feeling much better. The energy conduits you fed into my torso are warming me up nicely. How may I thank you? Well, you could start by answering a few questions. I will try, Captain Mercury. What do you know of the intruder spaceship? I built it to Professor Brainwave's specifications. Which were... Stronger, faster, and bigger than anything the Earth people might have. What are its weaknesses? There are no weaknesses. The Galaxo Crunch Adump was built to withstand any attack. Surely there must be something, a, a kink in the hull plating or a unshielded exhaust port. What kind of idiot would build an unshielded exhaust port into a titanic weapon like the Galaxo Crunch Adump? You know, Sparks was right. That that just sounds gross. Let's, uh, let's call it the intruder from now on. I do have one more question. Why didn't his attack kill you like it did the rest of your people? With all his intellect, Brainwave is unfocused. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, what? I am not to be disturbed. <sighs> Just a minute. Open this door, Doctor, or I'll vent your cabin into space. What do you take me for, an idiot? Tell me, Doctor, were you mad before you became a scientist, or did it happen the other way around? I have no time for your foolish questionings. Then allow me to try a pedantic statement. I don't buy that you just happened to end up in the Alpha Zone, and further yet, I'd say you were sent there by the Control Council. Try to understand this. You keep saying that, Doctor. Do I look stupid to you? The Control Council sent an emissary of peace to the Alpha Zone. When he did not return, they sent me to investigate. And we get an invasion for our trouble. An invasion led by that emissary, Professor Wilfred Von Hart. Now, twisted and evil, he calls himself Professor Brainwave. And that's supposed to mean something special to me, Doctor? <sighs> Professor Brainwave has the power to crush your ship with his very mind. You have no idea of what you're up against, Captain Mercury. He'll destroy you if he has the chance. You're forgetting. I'm a rocket ranger. I fight for oh, liberty yes, and know, justice. I know, you're one of those. That really rattles your birdcage, doesn't it, Doc? Well, I bet deep down inside you'd like us all to march to the sick beat of that galactic mastermind. Well, here are the stiff facts if you can handle them. In this vast, uncaring blackness we call space, I believe there are good people. Regular humans with untarnished hearts and an eye to clean living. And some of them, like me, believe in doing things by the book. The Earth is gone, along with all the rules you're so attached to. You're in uncharted territory now, whether you like it or not. You know what this is, Captain? A lima bean. Ah, this is the most powerful weapon yet devised by the mind of man. Uh, that looks like a lima bean to me, Doc. Well, I suppose it's only fitting that such destructive powers should be Cloaked within the guise of nature's most nutritious seed pod, eh? Yeah. 
This humble legume is no less than the first of a race of colossal nanites. Impossible. Nothing is impossible with science as your ally. Yeah, I've heard that too. Listen, you better get your lima bean friend here to hit the weights if he's going to knock out the intruder and get our planet back. Oh, I suppose you have a better plan. That's what worries me, Doc. I don't. For Sigil, I need to My you know, Nemo, when Matt first told me we had a gorilla scientist as our science officer, I asked myself, why do we need a gorilla scientist in space? Then, when I realized he meant a gorilla scientist, I still asked myself, why? Now, after all these years, I think I know why he chose you. Because I am the best. No! Because you're a big, stinky, hairy ape and you make him look good. What's the ship's status? Oh, fine, if you don't mind being followed through hyperspace. Looks like Mulchris' gift. She'll catch us in no time. Roll out the welcome mat. Oh, great and powerful mastermind. I have done as you commanded. We've captured the Earth, and we're on the way to the Alpha Zone. I'm sorry, I I didn't quite get that. You know, again, I can't quite make that out. If, if you turn down the screaming just a bit. How's this, you imbecile? I apparently have been able to increase your intellect without improving your understanding. If all humans are as utterly worthless as you, Professor, they will be bowing down before me like I was a lead singer in a boy band. I wouldn't count on that. Some humans can be quite stubborn. Then they will be crashed into oblivion. Well, whatever. At some point you're going to have to deal with the Rocket Rangers. Oh, you mean like the ones following you now? Rocket Rangers? Following me? We'll just see about that. Hey, Professor! I wasn't finished talking! Wait! I'm still speaking! Is that smell? Is that you, Crichton? Man, you smell like puke in a space helmet. There is a bar of Life Boy at the end of the hall. You two should get to know each other and mix it up. Say hi. Man, that is awful. You are nasty smelling, my friend. Hey, don't be shy. That bar of soap has seen just about everything. So, hey, mix it up. There you go. Ow. Ow. Why am I here? Why are you here? I'm here to help you find your lost planet. Oh, is that it? Your sense of duty is finally caught up to you? Well, somehow, I doubt that's what motivated you. What do you mean? Well, I think you realize the universe is an awfully empty place without a guy like Matt Mercury in it. Do you want my help or not? Does it involve robotic lima beans? No. Sounds good so far. After you. Quadranus 9, home of the Barkalore flower children. Hippies? If we stay on this path, the intruder will come within one parsec of Quadranus. Hey, that's the garden planet, isn't it? Planning a romantic vacation? The Barkalore could change the very fabric of space with their song. They could knock the intruder out of hyperspace and stop it dead in its tracks. And then you, you could save the Earth. You think the world of me, admit it. It's 
Sparks, it's the captain. Best time to Quadranus 9. Anything your girlfriend wants. She's a snotty little thing, isn't she? You have no idea. Do you think it's wise to leave a slobbering cyclops and an ape on the bridge? I'm more concerned about Dr. Cypher. Start looking for the flower children. The intruder will be out of range in less than three hours. We don't have much time. Come on, Jinky. Let's go look for the flower children over there. Great idea, Sparks. You and Jinky go that way. Mulchris and I we will go this way. Isn't that what I just said? Why do so many people feel the need to tell me what to do all the time? Come on, Jinky. Let's go. Mr. Lightning, you have 12 Ranger Squadrons on your battleship. Why did you only send Matt Mercury to fight the intruder? But an important message. You know, safeguarding the entire galaxy takes loads of energy. So whenever I need to recharge my batteries, I always reach for a rocket bar. Mike, you ever wonder why puppies are so cute? Yes, Rocket Bar, the new taste sensation that's so good for you. Because every Rocket Bar is made from wholesome, power-packed ingredients like pure cane sugar and rich milk chocolate. Did you know that people used to keep dogs as pets? Rocket Bar is perfect for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and it even makes us swell between meal snack. Shouldn't we go help Matt Mercury like real men would? Is that what you think we should do, Mike? I do. We may get destroyed, but at least we'll go out in style. So gang, the next time you need to recharge your batteries, Remember to reach for a rocket bar. Priority one, I muster call to all Hold Ranger on, hold on, Sonny. Let the professionals do it. Muster call to all Ranger personnel. By order of Star Commander Jack Lightning, you are ordered to report to ESS Valkyrie at 1600 hours. I think Mulkers just wanted the captain alone. There's a flower children on this planet. She's killed the king! Now, now you've done, done it! The giant invader killed the great and wonderful Todd! Eh. You know, I could just break these little ropes and run away. And how would that gain the support of the flower children? Excuse me, Sparks, just say calm and sit still for the moment. Why have you killed our leader, Todd? Are you planning an invasion? Oh no, oh great and powerful children of the flower, we come in peace. Uh, we must seek your help in stopping the great intruder that passes through your space. Killing our king was a bad way to start. However, we will do as you ask for one small punishment. The young female. The robot made me do it. Hey, now. Wait, Wait a minute. minute. Behold, our sacrifice. We are now a pea. We will sing the song of the flower children. Follow Sardress, follow Torga, Hypna Pishta. What 
What is that infernal singing and why are we stopping? The space-time mesh is out of phase. The hyperdrive is no longer functioning. We believe the song is the source of the disturbance. Prepare the projector. I'm going down there myself. Well, looks like your plan worked. I guess it's now time for me to go save the Earth. You'd better hurry, Matt. This brainwave character is going to do everything in his power to stop you. Hey, Matt. No fooling around. You haven't got much time. No time at all, I'm afraid. How bold, yet utterly ineffective. I am simply a projection. What did you do to them? Their simple primate minds are easily controlled. As is yours. Why did you make me do that? I could have just as easily made you pull that trigger, cat no, girl. Not the lips. <laughs> I like your spirit. I hope folding doesn't give you tummy troubles. You will entertain me on our long voyage to the Alpha Zone. <laughs> She's gone. So is the intruder. She saved my life, Captain. We have to go after her. By the stars above, we will. Did we miss Halloween this year? Or did Professor Brainwave tell you to dress that way? Professor Brainwave insists we wear these robes as a sign of respect. It's ceremonial. I guess you just do everything this professor jerk tells you to do. We obey the professor only as a service to our true master. So if he's not your master, who is? We serve the galactic mastermind, as you soon will. And what does the mastermind want with the Earth? The mastermind desires to gather all worlds and all civilizations before him. But why? The Mastermind is the last of the Old Ones. His mind feeds on the intellect of those who serve him. So, he's a thought vampire? You speak unknown words, yet you are somehow familiar. Familiar? How do you mean? I'm not sure. Your face looks like... No, I must be wrong. How could that be possible? Yeah, I know. Because this is the face of the last Dunner you saw before you got the most awesome, downright frightening, tail-whipping of your creepy alien life. Once again, in pursuit of the intruder, the crew of the Electra is even more committed to its destruction. All our hopes now rest in the hands of Dr. Cypher. Come and see. You've been at this for quite some time, Doctor. I hope your army of llama beans is complete. All's out, ready? See for yourself. For what good they will do us. What do you mean? I've been studying the intruder with its creator, Lord Volko. The thing is unstoppable. To attack it now would be fruitless and impossible. Nothing's impossible. You said so yourself. Well, I was wrong. He's right. Okay, I'm confused. I'm right about being wrong. There's got to be a way to stop that ship somehow. The hull solid uranium flux. Nothing will penetrate it. Well, surely you had to be able to cut and shape the thing to build it. I had special tools. They were in my workshop. But someone forgot to bring them. We'll go back and get them! There isn't time. Look, Malkris is on that ship. My planet is on that ship! We've got to stop it before it reaches the Alpha Zone. There's no need for such expository, Captain. We're not idiots, and we've been paying attention. Doc. If I can get these llama beans aboard the intruder, can they destroy that darn thing? Oh, they'll tear it apart at the molecular level, but how do you propose to get them on board? I'll carry them on board myself. Brainwave can read minds, remember? Not even you could make your brain blank enough to fool him. I've got to stop that ship somehow. I've got to save her, and I've got to save the Earth, too.
Captain? Captain? Yes, Jinky? Can I talk to you for a minute? What's on your mind? What am I? You're a General Industries neurokinetic robot and the finest engineer I've ever met. Thank you, Captain. But am I nothing more? How do you mean? Well, after I lost my head back on Quadranus 9, I got to thinking, I'm nothing more than a tool. Well, that's simply not true. I was made by man to serve man. Well, I guess that's true, but I think of you as much more than that. That's just because you have relationship issues. Okay then. Well, I hope that helps. It didn't. Great. Ah, back to work then. We have an intruder to catch. I see you've been fitted with your agony collar. It looks good on you. I like it. Yeah? Well, I don't like it. You better learn to behave, or you're gonna like it a lot less. Give her a taste of punishment. <laughs> oh God, it tickles. <laughs> You have it on the wrong setting. Just don't try anything funny, and we'll all remain friends. Well, my friends don't steal planets. You have no idea what I've done for humanity. Earth was alone in a dismal arm of the greater galaxy. Soon, it will be among a titan's ring of worlds, a virtual jeweled kingdom of the stars. What's with the chick? Pay no attention to the chick. The Alpha Zone is ruled by our leader, the Galactic Mastermind. And he sits upon a throne made of the shifting sands of time. He awaits the return of his love, Astrala, the Galactic Star Queen. It's all very stupid. Professor, she looks a lot like Astrala. Don't give her any ideas. You will soon see that I have not captured your world. I have elevated it to a seat of greatness among worlds. All you've got to do is show me a little bit of respect. You mean worship you? Well, if you insist. Computer, caravan tea, no milk. that rampart just beyond the ridge? Yeah. Yeah, I do. We're gonna fight our way up that hill and take it. Do you understand me, mister? Sure. I, I get that, but, you know, before we do that, and we will do that, I I'd like to get your opinion on something. What's on your mind, Matt? Well, you know, I'm into this whole heroic aspect duty of being a rocket ranger and all, and... Sure you are, Matt. Who wouldn't be proud to wear the circle bolts? Well, what if someday, in the future, people lose respect for the badge? What if they forget about our sacrifices? What if being a rocket ranger doesn't command the same respect? When bad men threaten society, and they always do, how can we lead the way to justice? I have two rules regarding respect. Number one, no one will give you respect. A leader must earn it. Rule number two, always wear a smile. A smile? The thing about a smile, Matt, is that it wins you friends as well as enemies. So you're saying if my crew is falling apart and my world is lost, 
A smile will help? Your crew will follow you anywhere you go, as long as they believe that you believe. You know what I see out there. Destruction and misery. A gathering of heroes answering the call of destiny. Do you hear the sound of sweet justice calling? Sure. I guess so. We are the Rocket Rangers, fighting foes from star to star. Wait. You're not singing, Matt. What's wrong? I don't know. I, I guess I'm just not into it. You're not into it? Man. Look around you. Can't you see that cash tong dawn arising? Don't you know what day this is? Thursday. This is the battle for Keen Eye's last stand. The greatest battlefield victory of your life. And you're just not into it? No. I think your greatest battle was the day she walked out of your life. I don't think this is the flashback you really want to be in. Hey, Matt! Mokris! Hey, Matt! I just got my orders! I know. Don't go. What are you talking about? I just got assigned to Royce's ship. I'm his first officer. You're not coming back. Matt, the war is nearly over. We're just mopping up. Nothing is going to happen to me. Besides, Royce is one of the best captains in the fleet. I'll be fine. I know, but you're not coming back. I don't know why. In fact, I never found out why you left the service. <laughs> you're talking like this is the past, Matt. The answer is never in the past. It's always in the future. Come on, Matt. Keep your eyes on the stars and just know that the answers that you seek are always in front of you. I thought I said no milk. What are you doing? I'm fixing the plumbing. What does it look like I'm doing? You're a robot, aren't you? And I see you're a token member of the He-Man Genius Society. Why are you so disgruntled, Mr. Robot? My name's Jinky, and I'm not disgruntled. I'm Woodapaw. You're a member of the hero crew that's on a mission to save the world from evil. How's that put upon? Good and evil is a human concern. I am a creation, and you're a creation, I guess. To be honest, I don't know what you are. What are you? I am Lord Volcro, leader of a once proud race of engineers. We built great things in our day. World engines, galactic movers. Thanks for all that. Really, Lord Volcro. No, thank you, Jinky. Why are you thanking me? For getting my name right. Sometimes little things like that are important, even for a molten man. Everyone deserves a little respect. I guess that's why I'm in such a bad mood. But people treat you pretty well. Better than the captain, as far as I can see. I don't feel like they do. Maybe you don't have as much to prove to them as you do to yourself. You have a lot of preconceived notions for a robot. You make me want to reevaluate my part in all of this. You have to prolong my conversation with suffering. But do go on. Even if this is the human's fight, maybe right and wrong are factors worthy of contemplation, even by a creature and a creation. I don't see the difference in this. The outcome is dependent upon the decisions you make. Turning the pipe the right way or the wrong way 
makes all the difference in the world. What is that? Your crew report, Captain Lightning. Why, thank you. Are we almost there yet? No, Mike. But we are moving as fast as we can. What's this do? Oh, that's the inertial dampening field control. And this big red one? <laughs> Don't touch that. That's the ship's self-destruct button. Why would you need a self-destruct button where you can accidentally push it? Well, it's there so that the ship's captain can push it at a moment's notice. I don't accidentally push buttons, Mike. Why would a battleship need a self-destruct button? Well, I can't really say, Mike. Not exactly. I mean, anything can happen out here in space. Now, why don't you just run along, and I'll let you know when we're close to the intruder. I'm not going anywhere. Why not? I'm going to make sure you don't push that red button. <sighs> The red alert! Captain, should I prepare your False shuttle? False alarm, but nice reflexes. I see Dr. Science finally saw fit to give you his files from his trip to the Alpha Zone. He didn't give me anything. She decrypted his workstation and took them. Captain, these star charts are amazing. There are sectors of the galaxy where no ranger has gone before. Just look at this. The Alpha Zone is located near the center of our galaxy. There must be a hundred populated planets in one orbit around that titanic chick's face. What do you make of that face, Nemo? Cute, but not my type. No, I mean, what's its purpose? I can only speculate that it is some form of regulator for the central nebula star. It must be made up of trillions of individual parts all working in unison. As for the face motif, it must be a cultural image of great significance. I'm sure Dr. Cypher knows all about it. There's more to this Dr. Cypher than meets the mind's third eye. Third eye? Sorry, my hindi enlightenment is showing. Enlightenment? Bah! Only a miscreant would steal another man's star charts. Don't worry, your karma is intact. I only allowed that blue-haired minx to take what I wanted her to take. However, someone in this ship was clever enough to steal my lima beans. Don't look at me. Beans give me gas. Oh, here we go. Dr. Cypher, you've hidden your true mission from us, haven't you? Well, if I had, you'd never know it. You were sent to the Alpha Zone to form an alliance with the Galactic Mastermind, weren't you? Whatever gave you that idea? Am I right? You're more lucky than right, Captain Mercury. But you and your crew deserve to know the truth. Go on. Professor Von Hart and I were sent to the Alpha Zone, but only to assess what threat the Mastermind might pose to our world. Or so I thought. As soon as we arrived, the professor overpowered me, stole a shuttle, and approached the Mastermind's city dome alone. I could only believe it was a desperate act of greed. However, before he reached the city, his shuttle was destroyed, and he along with it. Or again, so I thought. 
the mastermind, reached out to my mind and told me to prepare Earth for an invasion. Little did I know my former colleague was being manipulated, mutated, and eventually transformed into the agent of Earth's downfall. My mission, however, was not a total failure. While in the Alpha Zone, I was able to gather vital information about the Mastermind's plans. And robotic llama beans was the best you could come up with? If I can get them inside the intruder somehow, they will be virtually unstoppable. Well, let's hope they turn up. They better. And soon. The Rocket Rangers are back. What are your orders, Professor Brainwave? You fear for their safety. For one in particular. Captain Matt Mercury. You'd rather I not destroy them. Stay out of my mind. Oh, I will not. What I will do is invite Captain Mercury right here. Oh yes, dear Mokris, your pitiful friends will not survive, but you'll have the pleasure watching them die one by one right here. Don't be so sure of yourself, Brainwave. I knew you'd say that. Slow to sublight. We'll be receiving guests. Really going over there? If you have a better plan, I'd love to hear it. Stop it! What is he doing here? Crichton's taking Nemo to station and Nemo has the con. Now listen, old friend. Dr. Cypher and Vulcro are formulating a plan B. If you see a chance to destroy that thing, take it. Yes, sir. What's that smell? stop Brainwave before he can get the Earth into the Alpha Zone. Well, I know that. Why do you think I'm chasing you now? Just figured of the same reason you always chase me. Well, this is bigger than both of us this time. Listen, we're approaching the intruder fast. I'll be there in no time. No, 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 Matt. Don't come. He's expecting you. It's a trap. No, it's a showdown. And I'm bringing party favors. What? Never mind. Have you discovered any weaknesses that we can use to our advantage? Not really. I mean, the professor is mad as a hatter, and he's surrounded by an army of purple alien warriors who apparently think that I look like some ancient queen named Estrella. That's it, Mulchris. Use that against them. Make them believe that you're their queen. I'll try, but I don't want you to get yourself killed by coming over here. I've got this. Trust me, it's my destiny. No, no, this time I'm coming for you. God, I wish you didn't feel that way. I would have never left. Why did you leave? You were assigned first officer on Royce's rocket. He would have looked after you and seen to it that you had a command of your own someday. I was always a part of a team. You looked after me, and then Royce was going to look after me. And it's not that I didn't appreciate it. I just had more to prove than any of you. And quite honestly, I could never prove that I could soar while I was under your wings. Was I so wrong for caring about you? Were we all? Oh, Matt, don't you see? This was my chance to prove to the world that I'm good enough, that I'm good enough to be a rocket ranger, that I'm good enough to be human. You always have been, Mulchris, and that means you're a part of the family. You're not alone anymore. 
Matt? Matt! Oh, you stubborn man! I know what you're thinking, Jinky. You're not coming with me. Brainwave can, can read your, your mind. mind. I, I have, have an advantage. advantage. He, he can't, can't read, read my, my circuitry. circuitry. Good point. You're coming with me. I wonder where those lima beans went. I can help. What are you talking about? We could build robotic chickpeas. You're an idiot. You know that, don't you? Excuse me, it's moving. Gauge Phantom Drive, we are not letting it get away this time. Jinky, see if you can access this thing's drive core. Disable it any way you can. I'll see if I can keep Brainwave busy. You, you can, can count, count on me! me. Knock, knock! Justice calling! Welcome to your doom, Captain Mercury. Are you insane? Is that your problem? The problem before you is one of strategy. I'm sorry, Mr. Stupid, but this chessboard is way too large to be practical. I'd say it's a perfect battlefield for the intellect and a fitting arena for the last stand of... The Rocket Ranger? There's my move. They didn't expect that. A lie! Your first move was to send your little robot friend to destroy my ship. Even now, my Caxon warriors are hunting him down. You forget? I can read your thoughts, anticipate your moves, but don't feel bad. It's just that your simple primate mind isn't up to the challenge. Behold, the Alpha Zone! When will you learn that there just is no hope for you, Matt Mercury? You'll never enslave the people of the Earth. Oh, but I already have. Your people will worship me as a god. And I will be a jealous one. I might even throw a lightning bolt every now and again, just for fun. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You know, Matt, every corrupt king needs a able-bodied hero like you to challenge his rule. It makes it so much better for the fairy tellers. I think we could find a spot for a go-getter like you in our organization. I'll have no part of it, Brainwave. I'll stop you any way I can, even if I have to kill you. What a shame. We would have made such wonderful adversaries. Oh, hey, uh, you wouldn't know where the bathroom is, El Banyo? I'll take that as a no. No, Captain Mercury! I win! Bow to the Star Queen, or we will destroy you, Professor Brainwave. We realized she is the true face of our Star Queen. That's right, Brainwave. Now you shall bow before me. What, did we stop selling crazy around here and just start giving it away? <sighs> Malkris, you don't have to do this. I think I do. You don't have to read minds to know she's bluffing. This woman is not your star queen. She just wants to save her stupid boyfriend. So, you are my girlfriend after all. 
I am the Star Queen. finished yet. You don't have to do this. Trust me. I think I do. I know you think you're doing the right thing, but always doing the right thing isn't all it's cracked up to be. Trust me, Matt. Just this once. I am ready to assume my position among the stars. As it is written, so it shall be again! She may rule the stars, but I still hold your world in my iron talons. Let me show you what horrors this machine is capable of! The intruder's claw! It's closing on the Earth! Prepare to fire. Lightning to Electra, what's your status? Captain Lightning, tell your friends to energize their cannons. Security breach, Nanite invasion. Security breach, Nanite invasion. What have you done? Jinky, you sneaky little pup. Looks like your all powerful machine isn't so powerful after all. Fire! I hate to crush and run, but this is my execute. Fire! Sparks, come in! It's Captain Mercury! Stop firing! No, I'll do what I can to knock out the intruder from here, but you keep firing! <laughs> To unlock the controls, you're going to have to play my game after all. Blast that folding felon! No effect! The claw will destroy the Earth's crust in four minutes! The intruder's mass has your planet captured in a gravity well. Target the central hub. I'll key in the coordinates now. Kings 2, Knight takes Rook, <laughs> checkmate. It's shutting down, it's dying. Then let us carve this bird up like a Sunday turkey on Saturday morning. Welcome to Control Central. Your audience with the controllers will begin after this brief commercial message. Remember to reach for a rocket bar. I hate rocket bars. Really? I kind of like them. The control council is secure. The Earth is safe. All thanks to your rangers, Captain Mercury. We will not grant you commendation, however. Due to a technical oversight in your flight log, which according to Section 3955 of the Universal Control Charter, disqualifies you from promotion or salary increase. We are the controllers. New orders, Captain Matt Mercury? No, but that's not stopping me. Oh, that's right. 
Our planet is now orbiting a nebula full of colonizing aliens in an uncharted area of space. We've got one rocket and a battleship full of idiots. Who would dare stand against us? I'm sure Brainwave is still alive, Doctor, and goodness only knows what Mulkris is up to. I miss Jinky. He's not dead, as long as we remember. <laughs> Log of the Electra. Captain Matt Mercury still commanding, I think. After the trials of this day, we find our ship and crew tested and true. I now set out among the great starways to explore this gathering of worlds, this Alpha Zone, and in some way continue to seek the one I've lost. You know, Captain, the Control Council isn't going to be very happy when they've discovered we've taken one of their last rockets. We'll be back or dead before they wake up from their afternoon naps. Either way, it doesn't matter. Then what are we doing out here? I just thought I'd check out the new neighborhood, that's all, Doc. You didn't have to come along. Oh, yes, I did. As a scientist, I cannot resist the unknown. And there's the unknown here in an abundance. Imagine all these new worlds. What undiscovered mysteries must lay amongst these unexplored civilizations, huh? But you know, Matt, she's not coming back. Then I'll go after her. Hmm. She never did follow your rules. You could never tame her. And yet you're willing to risk everything to find her, huh? It's the Rocket Ranger way, Doc. Uh. Earth needs you, Matt Mercury. Now, more than ever before. Mokris? Is that you? The drive's locked up. I can't move. I have suppressed the rule of the Mastermind. For a time. With this new freedom, will come war among the Ring of Worlds. You must be ready to defend humanity. We are the Rocket Rangers, fighting foes from star to star. No, no, no. So whenever you're in danger, Not the singing, just please. call no. the Rocket Rangers, cause we are the Rocket <laughs> Rangers, fighting foes from star to star. Whenever you're in danger, just call the Rocket Rangers. You're late. <laughs>
please take a moment and press the like button and subscribe to our channel. It's very important and it's the way we'll keep more stories coming your way.